Welcome back everyone to our next unboxing video. This is the Ender 3 V3 KE. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't like a long introduction. I'm going to start the video with me cutting open the box. Let's get into it. I'm excited about this one. My last one that I did, the Ender 3 V3 SE. If you have that printer or thinking about getting that printer, watch that video because I did the exact same thing. In this video today, I'm just going to unbox it, get it set up. I'm not going to take you through the first print. I'm going to show you everything that's in the box here. You can see the control panel there and the spool holder, power cord, uh, little bags full of tools and screws. That one I just put down was the filament runout sensor. That's a big difference between the SE and the KE. The KE has a filament runout sensor. The SE does not. And I really like that one feature. I like the SE a lot. Don't get me wrong. I really like my SE. While I'm unboxing this, the SE is in another room printing away. It just never stops. It's such a good little printer. Price difference. This KE is about $80 US more than the SE. So when it's done being put together, here's the last piece coming out now. When it's done being put together, you're not going to see a huge difference between the two. They're basically the same. Even the even the assembly is very, very similar. I'm going to try to do a better job today of letting you see all the screws as I'm putting them in where they go. That's the last pieces of foam. But the for the eighty dollars, I think I think the KE is definitely a good eighty dollars more. Okay, well, let's just get this gantry on here. As you can see, they're based on the gantry. <clears throat> Same thing, put the hot end facing towards the front. There's little slots there, like a T-shaped slot. These slide into. And then, uh, just like on the SE, you're going to open up the plastic bag that has the instruction manual. It has that same nozzle cleaning tool. It has the same stickers, warranty card. There's my instruction manual. Let's take a look at it just to make sure I don't miss any steps. That's what I'm doing. I've done this before, but I don't want to miss any steps and make a mistake, especially since I'm recording it on video. I am not going to re-record. I am not going to go back and tape the box closed. I'm doing this. Oh, metal spatula in this one. Interesting. That's the snippers I really like. US. Oh, that's the grease, a USB. Oh, USB stick, not an SD card on this one. It's a USB stick. That's another difference. This one has got Wi-Fi capabilities. Basically the same assembly tools exactly, I think. A little mini screwdriver, a little wrench, and some Allen wrenches. And then a bunch of screws. Not too many. We're going to start with the, the six that hold the gantry onto the base here. So, just like in the other one, I'm going to set it on its side. And there is, oh, this one is a little different here. Wait a second. This is what's stopping that from going in. There is a wire on this one. This is for the filament runout sensor at the top there. So there is a little plug on the end of a wire. It has to go through the hole first. That's why I was having a hard time getting that in the slot now it goes in there nice and easy so that's uh, one difference right there we'll see and then we've got the three screws same as we had on the se oh i'm going to attach that cable while in there yeah so there's there's a little wire that comes out the gantry and there's a spot to, for it to be plugged in right down there simple simple now the other side same thing three screws into the bottom and we're going to be done working on the bottom so as you can see we're not even five minutes in and we have what looks like a 3d printer already and i'm reading instructions I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing this. 
If you really wanted to try to set some record to how fast you could do it, you could probably get this all done in 10 minutes. But as you can see, I'm taking my time, getting the right screws. This is the same as in the SE, the same two little screws on the back. Let me turn this around so you can see that better because I didn't do that in my last video. You can see now on the right hand side, there is a motor at the base of the gantry. On the left hand side, there isn't. So there is two little screws that go in right there. But on the right hand side, there's no screw. So that's it. There's six on the bottom, two on the top that is attached. And now you can see three holes on the side there. That's for this control panel. This is a different control panel than on the SE, but the attaching of it is exactly the same. You plug it in first, and then, I mean, the easiest way to do it is set the thing on its side so you can line up the holes and put the screws in. This is a touch screen on the KE. I like the, the little screen on the SC. It's got a simple knob. You turn it, you push in to hit enter. It, it couldn't be easier. This one, touch screen. So it's a little better, uh, they say. I, I like it too, yeah, it's got more features. Uh, it's a basic touch screen. But the KE can be hooked up Wi-Fi to your computer. So you can, I mean, I print right from the Creality slicing software right from my computer to the to the printer so you don't ever have to although you can see on the side here of the control panel you can see there's USB slots so you can put a file on a USB stick that comes with it and slide it in there and print from the USB also okay what am I doing now what's next ooh yeah so here we have the filament runout sensor which is attached to the spool filament spool thing so and of course I don't have the camera up high enough but I'm gonna turn this around anyway just so you can see there's, there's there's two screws I gotta get the right wrench here there it is and these just go in the back here of course we want the spool facing forward uh, the spool holder is not attached to it yet. It comes in two pieces. We just got to screw this in. Filament runout sensor is basically on the right hand side. And if you've never had a filament, yeah, you can see it a little better here, even though it's not really in frame. I don't have a cameraman hired or anything. I'm doing this by myself. So you can still see the screws there. Use your imagination. If you don't know what a filament runout sensor is, it's pretty self-explanatory. You run the filament from the spool through this little box, which is a sensor, and then into the hot end. And then if your filament runs out and it gets pulled out of that box, the printer will automatically pause the print. So you can put a new spool of filament on and continue with your print job. And I tell you, it takes all the pressure off of using small rolls and stuff like that. Don't have to worry about, oh, if, if this is enough filament or not. I really like the filament runout sensor. Okay, now let's hook up this cable. You can see there's a belt on the top there. If you just pull on it, it moves the print head up and down. I'm gonna turn it around now because we're printing, plugging in this print cable. There's two little squeeze things there. It's, I said it before, I'll say it again, it's like putting RAM into a computer. You press it in and those two little pinchers should come together and now the cable's on there. The cable's nice and solid in there, but they still give you this little bracket, plastic bracket, that goes on the front. Let's just get rid of some of this garbage, come on. Yeah, you can see this one a lot better than the last time. That little plastic bracket, it's just got a screw on each side. And it's going to really make the cable nice and secure. Keep it in there. Extra level of safety. I like it. And two little screws, easy to do. So for the $80 extra, you get the filament runout sensor. 
we get the touchscreen Wi-Fi capabilities. And I don't know if you can tell or not. You'll be able to see once I make a video with these side by side. But this print head is completely different also. So the KE is definitely an upgrade. So depending on your budget and what you want to print will determine whether or not it's worth it to you. Now, remember the last time, if you watched the SC, I said there's that plastic wrapping on the cable. And this time we get to see me pinch it into the little clip that's there for it. So there's a clip right there, that plastic around, and now the wire into the motor, that's that. So we've got the wire in the top, the wire plugged into the motor, and the plastic put into that clip. What's next? Uh, same as last time, don't forget there is a wire right here that needs to be plugged into this little motor right there. That's that step. That's it. That is literally it. Well, I'm going to plug the power cable in. Now, I said it before, don't forget that depending on where you live, there is a switch at the back to switch between 115 volts and 220 volts. So depending on your power supply in your country, make sure it's proper. I've seen posts on Facebook groups and stuff like that, wondering why their printer's not working right out of the box. And that's the first thing you should check. So here in China, we use 220, just like in Europe and Australia. So make sure the switch is flipped to that. It's a little like a fuse switch in the back. And now I'm gonna use my side cutters to open up this plastic bag. It's a little overkill for a plastic bag, but free filament little tiny sample roll of filament I don't know how many grams this is it's not very much but it was free and i don't turn down free things i like free things so we're gonna put the filament on run it through the filament runout sensor of course we snip the end off Try to make it a nice sharp, I'd say 45 degree angle. It's always nice to have a sharp end to work with. Oh, I'm not going to go through the filament runout sensor. I guess it's just for... Just for doing the configuration. You can see the same, same uh, direct drive. You just squeeze the little trigger with your one thumb and push it in with your other hand. And you can go right down to the nozzle. Okay, so now we are here on the touch screen. You can see, you go to settings. We have to change the language to English, please. This is the only language I know. Go back to the home. And we're putting in the USB stick. It goes into the side here, right on the side and it automatically says it's discovered something and then there's the little folder there but we really want to do the auto leveling configurations you can see there's two choices there I'm gonna select them both and hit start there. Now we'll let the printer go ahead. You can see the bed start moving. It's going to do its Z offset, bed leveling. Everything's going to be automatic. Basically now we're done. We have to wait for the printer to do what it has to do before we can make our first print. But like I say, I'm not going to do that in this video. We're going to stop the video here because we're not even at 15 minutes, not even 15 minutes. And I've gone from printer inbox to printer setup and working itself, doing what it has to do. So setup of a printer, if you've never owned a 3D printer, the Ender 3 V3 SE or KE, both very easy to set up, very easy to get to your first print. We'll make some more videos showing you how exactly to get printing once you get it set up. But if you're trying to determine whether or not you should get the SE or the KE, then stay tuned. 
I'm going to make some more videos on the differences between the two. I really like them both. I, I Honestly, it's going to come down to your budget and what you want to print. But uh, that is the Ender 3 V3 KE right there. And it is my new toy. So it's time for me to get printing. Thanks a lot for watching. Give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day.